For over a century, humanity has been haunted by a ghost. We built a monster in our collective imagination, pieced together from fragments of bone and fear. We told ourselves that the ruler of the ancient oceans was simply a great white shark, but scaled up to nightmare proportions, a bulky, thick-skinned tank of a predator that crushed whales like grapes. We were wrong. We looked at the shadows of the past and saw what we wanted to see, not what was actually there. The reality uncovered by groundbreaking research published in 2025 is far stranger and more terrifying than the movie monsters we invented. The creature that actually patrolled our oceans for 20 million years wasn't a heavy-set brute. It was a sleek, hydrodynamic anomaly that grew to sizes scientists previously thought impossible. The megalodon we knew is dead. The real monster has finally been revealed, and its story, from its violent birth to its lonely extinction, rewrites the history of the ocean. To understand why we got it so wrong, you have to understand the inherent flaw in studying sharks. Unlike the dinosaurs, whose calcium-rich bones turned into detailed stone statues, sharks are ghosts. Their skeletons are made of cartilage, the same soft, flexible material in your nose and ears. When a shark dies, it doesn't fossilize, it dissolves. For hundreds of years, the only evidence that Megalodon ever existed was its teeth. These hand-sized serrated triangles were found embedded in cliff sides and washed up on beaches. In the 17th century, they were called tongue stones, thought to be petrified dragon tongues or snakes. When naturalists finally realized they belonged to a shark, they made a simple, logical, but ultimately incorrect assumption. The teeth looked somewhat like those of a modern great white. Therefore, scientists assume the animal attached to them must be a direct ancestor, essentially a great white pumped full of steroids. They classified it as Carcharodon, Megalodon. This classification dictated every piece of art, every movie, and every museum exhibit for decades. We gave it the great white's bulky torso, its conical snout, and its heavy build. But as paleontology advanced, the cracks in this theory began to show. Detailed analysis of the tooth enamel and root structure revealed that Megalodon wasn't a great white at all. It belonged to a completely different lineage, the Autodontidae, or megatoothed sharks. This was a family of predators that split from the shark family tree millions of years before the great white ever evolved. They were distant cousins, not father and son. This realization opened the door to a new question. If it wasn't a giant great white, what was it? The answer remained elusive until 2025, when a team led by Dr. Kenshu Shimada released a study that shattered previous estimates. The breakthrough didn't come from teeth, but from something far rarer, a partial column of fossilized vertebrae discovered in Europe. Unlike teeth, which only tell us about the mouth, vertebrae tell us about the body. The spinal column is the blueprint of the animal's architecture. For years, the accepted maximum size of a megalodon was capped at roughly 15 to 18 meters, about 50 to 60 feet. That is undeniably huge. But Shimada's team compared the ratio of the fossilized vertebrae to the spinal structures of over 180 distinct living shark species. They realized that the previous math was based on the wrong body type. When they applied the correct anatomical ratios to the Autodontidae family, the numbers skyrocketed. The new data suggests that while many individuals were smaller, the largest megalodons defied all expectations. They didn't just stop at 18 meters. Some individuals likely stretched to a staggering 24.3 meters. That is nearly 80 feet long. To put that into perspective, this is not just shark size, this is whale size. A 24 meter megalodon rivals the modern blue whale, the largest animal to ever exist. We are talking about a predator that could weigh up to 94 tons. This wasn't just an apex predator. It was a biological impossibility that somehow existed. The size update was shocking, but the shape reveal was transformative. The great white model assumed a stocky, thick body. It assumed an animal built for bursts of power. The 2025 research suggests the opposite. The vertebrae indicate a body that was elongated and slender. If you want to visualize the real megalodon, you shouldn't look at jaws. You should look at a lemon shark. The new reconstruction depicts a creature with a shorter, blunter, snout, flatter jaws and an incredibly long, straight
streamlined torso. It likely possessed elongated pectoral fins, acting like the wings of a glider. This wasn't an aesthetic choice by nature, it was an engineering necessity. A bulky body creates drag. Moving a 94-ton body through water requires immense energy. By evolving a slender, torpedo-like shape, Megalodon became highly efficient. It minimized resistance, allowing it to cruise across global oceans with minimal effort. This efficiency allowed it to become a transoceanic traveler, dominating waters from the coast of Peru to the shores of Denmark. But this dominance didn't start in adulthood. It began in the womb. The savagery of the megalodon was innate. We know from studying the reproductive biology of its closest living relatives, like the sand tiger shark, that these animals practice oophagy, intrauterine cannibalism. Megalodon mothers likely gave birth to live young, but only a few would survive the pregnancy. The first embryos to hatch inside the mother would consume their unhatched siblings for nourishment. This meant that when a baby megalodon was finally born, it was already a survivor of a massacre. And it was huge. Newborns measured nearly four meters in length, the size of a full-grown modern great white. They entered the ocean not as vulnerable prey, but as instant apex predators. <laughs> so we have a creature that is 24 meters long, streamlined for efficiency, born at four meters, and spread across every ocean. It sounds invincible. How does an animal like that simply vanish? The extinction of the megalodon is often blamed on cooling oceans, but that is an oversimplification. The 2025 study and prior research show that megalodon was capable of thermoregulation. It could keep its body warmer than the surrounding water. It could handle the cold. The problem wasn't the temperature, it was the calories. Around 3.6 million years ago, the ecosystem began to shift. The Pliocene era brought a drop in sea levels. As the water receded, the shallow, warm coastal shelves, the nurseries where Megalodon raised its young, disappeared. At the same time, the ocean saw a massive extinction event of small to medium-sized whales, the primary food source for the Megalodon. Suddenly, the menu changed. The whales that survived were the ones that migrated to the freezing polar waters where Megalodon couldn't follow, or they were the ones that grew simply too massive to be easily hunted. And then the usurper arrived. The modern great white shark had evolved. Compared to Megalodon, the great white was small and weak, but it was agile, it was fast, and crucially, it didn't need 100,000 calories a day to survive. The great whites were efficient tactical hunters. They likely targeted the same prey as juvenile Megalodons. They outcompeted the young giants, eating the food before the Megalodons could grow big enough to dominate, Megalodon's greatest asset, its size, became its death sentence. A 94-ton body is a liability when food is scarce, it's starved to death, outmaneuvered, by a smaller, faster rival and a changing world. Yet the legend persists. You have seen the clickbait. You have seen the documentaries claiming Megalodon is hiding in the Mariana Trench. We can say with absolute scientific certainty that this is false. The Mariana Trench is a biological desert. The deep ocean does not have the biomass to sustain a massive, high metabolism predator. There is simply nothing down there for a 94-ton shark to eat. Furthermore, we have the evidence of absence. For the last three million years, whales have exploded in size. The reason blue whales and humpbacks are so large today is specifically because their main predator went extinct. If megalodon were still lurking in the deep, whales would never have been able to grow so large and slow. The ocean would be a very different place. The megalodon is gone. But the truth we have uncovered is far more respectful to its legacy than the myths. It wasn't a movie monster, it was a masterpiece of bio biological engineering. A sleek, trans-oceanic traveler that pushed the absolute limits of how large a predator can exist on Earth. It ruled for 20 million years, and it took a global planetary shift to finally bring it down. If you want to stay updated on the true history of our planet's past, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. The ocean still holds millions of secrets, and we are just beginning to uncover them.